Well, the military general in charge of U.S. air defenses is claiming that the Pentagon did not shoot down the Chinese flight as it approached Alaska last month because officials initially did not think it posed a military threat. After finally shooting it down on Saturday, a week later, the Biden administration claims there will be no change to U.S.-China relations. Here's President Biden yesterday. Watch this. Does Biden believe we can U.S.-Chinese relations? No. We've made it clear to China what we're going to do. They understand our position. We're not going to back off. We did the right thing. And there's not a bad question of weakening or strengthening. It's just the reality. Joining me right now is Fox News Senior Strategic Analyst, Chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Keane. General, it's great to see you. I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm so stunned by the president's reaction there. To say, no, there's not going to be any change, and, and China understands what we're doing, that we're not going to back down. It feels like we're on our heels. And, and, and meanwhile, it was the CCP that breached our sovereignty. What's your reaction to all of this? Well, yes, yeah, certainly. I, I've always felt it was a national embarrassment to have a spy balloon over the United States and transverse the entire swath of the United States and spend about a week doing it. I mean, just the act of itself. Even it, we have some good news here. Our intelligence service uh, telling us that they were able to mitigate and stop China from collecting. But just the reality of it taking place and the impact it has on the American people a sense of vulnerability that China can put a spy balloon across the United States. Are we going to continue to tolerate that because we believe we can mitigate it? What if they send four or five balloons to different locations uh, in the United States? We're going to we're going to accept that because well we can stop the the uh, the collection has taken place. No, I mean I think when they do the autopsy on this, if they haven't done it already, I think they recognize that given the fact that this balloon was transiting from China on the 21st of January and reached the United the shores of the United States in the Aleutian Islands on the 28th, some seven days in transit, that if they had to do it all over again, they would have taken that balloon out as it approached the Aleutian Islands, even though they knew it was not carrying a military weapon. I think when he says no hostile act, I think what he means, no, no military threat, he means no military weapon, but certainly a surveillance device collecting information over nuclear bases, by definition, is a hostile act. Certainly the Russians thought that when Gary Powers flew his U-2 airplane over Russia and, and they shot it down. I mean, rea reality is here, yes, we have lost some face in this. And a little co a less confidence in what has taken place in terms of our detection of these uh, devices and our ability to do something to it er early on. So I believe the administration has got a lot of questions to answer. I'm sure the, the Congress is going to ask them. But, you know, Maria, they owe a, a much fuller explanation to the American people after everybody in America watched this for almost a week. Yeah, I mean, everything you said, I, I could not agree more on. I mean, you know, to have a spy flight above our military installations, General, to me seems like that's a real threat. So I don't know what we're hearing from the intelligence community in terms of we weren't able to stop China from collecting information. Were, was this balloon not sending data back live as it was traveling? Well, what they're telling us is that they, when they were tracking it during those seven days, they knew it was a surveillance device and was not carrying a military weapon. You know, a nuclear analyst for years have warned us against the possibility of an adversary flying a balloon over the United States with a nuclear device on it and setting it off in the atmosphere to create an electric magnetic pulse and shut down our entire electric grid. This is something that has always concerned the intelligence community. The good news here is they're telling us that during those seven days, they, they were able to know that it did not have a military device on it. But certainly, yeah. surveillance capability in of itself over nuclear bases is a hostile act and should be treated as such, and I don't think it should be tolerated.
Well, that's right. And that's why John Ratcliffe on Sunday, when he joined me on Sunday Morning Futures, was outraged in terms of the payloads that this balloon was capable of. Here's uh, the former director of national intelligence on Sunday. Watch. Uh, we know from public reporting, without getting into anything classified, that China, for at least six years, has been successfully deploying payloads, including drones, from stratospheric balloons. And what's publicly known um, is that the U.S. military and Department of Defense has a number of projects um, out there involving stratospheric or stratolite balloons and different types of possible payloads that could be deployed, as you, as you talked about, everything from cicada drones to very small electronic listening devices uh, that could run on solar power and transmit data back interminably. So, General, we're not going to do anything about it? We're not going to change the U.S.-China relations? We're not going to push back at all? I mean, the president said nothing changes. Doesn't that lack of a response in and of itself show massive weakness to the Chinese Communist Party? Well, I, I certainly, we're in a very adversarial relationship with China. I mean, by definition, uh, we're in a Cold War, but we're not stating it because the United States and China both don't want to make that claim because they know that allies and partners are going to have to make choices about who to side with. But the, the definition is, really, this is a Cold War that we're in, and we have to develop comprehensive strategies to counter China. And I think the, the president should be a lot clearer with, with the American people in terms of what this relationship really is. Certainly, diplomatic efforts should continue, much as they did with the Soviet Union for deal for years, which led to a rather dramatic and consequential conclusion as a result of diplomatic efforts between Reagan and Gorbachev in signing the nuclear deals. So, yes, but the relationship is what it is. This is a, an adversarial country who wants to replace the United States as a global leader and dominate the world economically, militarily, technologically, and geopolitically. And believe me, that is serious and, yes, comprehensive strategy needed and more explanation to the American people. We can't just slide this off as something that was not consequential. It is very consequential, and in the minds of the American people, I think the psychological impact is significant. People felt vulnerable for a week. We got spy balloons over the United States from China. Well, they we already have vulnerable. good good consensus here. Yes, we already have pretty good consensus here. The American people believe China is a threat. I believe the administration should talk more about what this relationship really is and what yeah. we're trying to, to achieve with this adversarial relationship. By the way, General, there's also questions in terms of our defense spending now. You saw the journal op-ed the other day. Seen any other spy balloons lately? An $850 billion defense budget, and we can't even detect a Chinese airship? Yeah, this is quite revealing that there were three... Uh, balloons that were floated in over U.S. territory during the Trump administration. I spoke to a senior defense official last night who confirmed what the NORAD commander said. We did not detect those. We only know about them now because we asked our intelligence services after this penetration to go back and check and see yeah. what the history is of China's use of these balloons. And the determination is yes. There were three penetrations. So when Trump officials say, I wasn't briefed on it, they're absolutely right. The national security community did not know that those balloons had violated Americans' airspace. That's a fact. Yeah, but, General, and, let's be and clear. We've got a, let's be clear. We, obviously, if, that's a serious issue. Uh, I'm sure it is. But that's even a very if they serious did issue. Come in, they were not here for a week able to collect all this data. So it's really not the same thing. And uh, just to be clear, all of the Trump administration officials we spoke with said that they have no knowledge of, of, of three breaches. But even if there were a, bre a breach that you're referring to, they certainly were not traveling across America for a week uh, above military installations. Yeah, but it's very serious, Marie. You're, you're, you're diminishing it. Because if, if they came up from the South, uh, which I suspect they did, um, that reveals to us that there's something wrong with our detection systems. 
And China released yeah. a hypersonic glide vehicle in July of 21. It circumnavigated the globe and approached from the south and went back to China. And we were not able to track it with our radar systems. And that revealed a, a, a clear security breach that we have. And this is yeah. further evidence that the radar and satellite coverage that we have to deal with China's modern technology and modern capability is not what it should be. And that is well, a serious issue, disturbing. regardless of how long those balloons were in the United States. How long they were is not, is not the issue. Yeah. The fact that we did not detect a penetration of the United States airspace yeah. is the issue. I understand. I understand. It's very concerning, very disturbing, something that you've said many times we're outgunned when it comes to the Chinese Navy. So clearly we have massive holes uh, in, uh, in, in what we're talking about. General, it's good to see you. We so appreciate your leadership on all of this. Thank you, sir.